Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, I hope you're doing good today. So for all your tea sipping needs, make sure you guys go to lovelytea.net or amazon.com forward slash shops forward slash lovely tea. Thank you guys so much for the support and stay tuned for the video. All right, so I'm feeling much better, honey, okay? So I want to come on camera, spill some tea for you guys. I know you guys have been wanting my opinion on the whole Takashi 6 9 situation. So I want to come on here and kind of break everything down to you guys. And plus give my opinion on what I thought went down, okay? So what's going on, if you guys don't know, the other day Takashi 6 9 was arrested. They have him on weapons charges and racketeering. And they're saying that he's facing up to life in prison, okay? So this situation is very serious. If you guys don't know, the other day, just last week, he was on The Breakfast Club. And there was a lot of little things he was saying on The Breakfast Club. We all watched it in my household, me and the boys. And so basically there were some things that he was saying that, you know, he just felt like something was going to happen. He was saying that the only people that he fears is God and the feds. And then he was saying that, you know, outside of his home, um, he's seen up to six fed cars and that his old, you know, group, Treyway and his old managers and his booking agency, they were sending threats to his mother's home and trying to tell people to go and attack his mother. So it was a lot of mess that was going on. Go ahead and check this snippet really quick and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. Mm -hmm. It's not state. Mm -hmm. I got federal agents sitting in front of my house. One, two, three, four, five, six cars. It's, it's beyond us. It's nothing I could do. What? What am I? There's one thing. There's only one thing I fear in life. No, two things. No, I'm not gonna. I I fear God. Mm -hmm. And I fear the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Only two things I'm scared of in life. Mm -hmm. God first and the FBI. All right, so you guys just saw that Breakfast Club snippet. Now, for me, when I watched that Breakfast Club interview, it raised a lot of red flags. I saw a young man who had gotten himself way too deep in the game, and he's trying to find a way to get out. He's realizing that things that he was told, things that he was warned about, things that Charlemagne was telling him, things that Fat Joe even told him 10 months ago in a recent interview, you know what I'm saying, were now coming to pass, and you could tell that he was legit worried and he was legit concerned. Now, the reason why I truly felt that he distanced himself from his management team and from Shoddy and Treyway and all these people that he was looking loving to shout out from his whole crew. When somebody cuts off their entire crew, that means that they find out that their crew members were involved in some nefarious shit concerning them, okay? Now, before he went on to the Breakfast Club, if you guys don't know, a few days before his Breakfast Club interview, um, the person who had kidnapped him and pistol whipped him, remember a few months ago, he was kidnapped and pistol whipped. A lot of us thought it was a joke. We thought, once again, he was trolling. He was looking for attention, but it was actually real. And the person was caught just a few days before the Breakfast Club interview and the person who was guilty of kidnapping 6 9 and pistol whipping him was his own boy that was part of his entourage, okay? His name was Anthony Jamel Ellison and basically he was arrested for robbery and kidnapping and he stated that the reason why he did this to 6 9 was because he was fired after basically helping to manage 6 9 you know, fight with him when everything went down. He was in his corner, and for 6 9 to fire him, he took personal offense to that, okay? Now, let me also tie this in. Anthony Ellison was also with Takashi when he got into that huge fight at LAX. Yeah, I'm rolling on This is too crazy. Oh, my God. I've never yeah, seen anything yeah. like this, dude. That's what we love. If you guys remember, I covered that story. He got into a fight with some guys from, you know, Texas. They were part of Jay Prince Jr.'s crew. And so Ellison can be seen fighting right along Takashi. So after that fight happened and it went viral, at that point, Takashi 6 9 fired that whole crew, the management team, and everything else. And then that's when he became really close with Shadi, a.k.a. the dude that's always like, Trey Ray, Trey Ray. So that's when they became really close, okay? So for me, when I seen that this guy, Anthony Ellison, was arrested... Okay, and that he kidnapped Takashi and also pistol whipped him. Plus with all the subliminal shit that he was saying on The Breakfast Club, I knew deep down inside that this boy had gotten himself into a lot of shit and that he knew that his life was in danger. That video shoot that was shot up last week where I did the video on that, 
that video shoot for them to shoot the room that was initially attended for Takashi 69 let me know that these were people that knew Takashi that knew his schedule these were people in his inner workings okay and that's why he kept saying that the booking agency was basically leaking out his mom's address and he was really concerned about that okay because again how would these people know this information unless it's people close to you so now fast forward a few days after that we see him on social media clowning talking shit about Charlemagne talking shit about the breakfast club interview y'all go ahead and check this out bomb these niggas make sure y'all go watch this interview people think I'm off cocaine losing my mind <laughs> This hey ass nigga, look at his face. This nigga is crusty. Look. <laughs> All right, so you guys see him talking mess. Then we seen him laid up with Jade, once again, cheating on his baby's mother. And then shortly after that is when he was arrested. But what they're saying is that initially they had caught him in because they had been investigating. One thing about the feds, they let a case build up. They'll let you fuck up and do all types of stuff. So that way, when they decide to bam you, they have all the evidence. They don't want to pounce too early. But the problem with the 6 9 investigation is that they're listening to wiretaps and they're listening listening to his own homeboys talk about violating him, super violating him, basically shooting him and killing him. And there had already been attempts on his life because if you guys don't know, back in October after he was given probation on that sex case, he basically walked away. He went to a celebration dinner in New York and he had hired private security and some guys came try to crash the party. Private security told them that they couldn't come in. At that point, they had hit private security with the chair and started fighting them. The security guards pulled out a licensed gun and they shot two of the guys. And one of the guys got shot in the stomach and he was in, you know, critical condition. Go ahead and check out this police report. Check this out. Uh, restaurant here at 33 East 60th Street uh, to have dinner. Uh, he had hired private security. Um, some males tried to enter the restaurant and were denied by the private security. These males came back a short time later and struck one of the private security guards over the head with a chair. This um, security guard uh, produced a licensed handgun and fired two times, striking one of the individuals in the torso. This individual was removed to an area hospital where he's being treated. Currently, the 19th Precinct Detective Squad is here investigating, walking the crime scene, looking for video, and talking to witnesses. Um, this investigation is in its early stages, and uh, when we get more information, we will fill you in later. All right, so you guys just heard what the NYPD had to say. So that situation that went down in October also tells me that was also an attempt on Takashi's life as well, okay? So they did something in October. The video shoot, thank goodness Nicki Minaj was not in that room because anything could have happened to her. And I think because it was so many attempts on this boy's life, eventually the police had to step in and say, you know what, no more. We need to call him in, let him know what's going on. And at that point, he had a chance to work with the police. He had a chance to work with the feds. He signed a waiver, said he wasn't saying nothing. He wasn't going to snitch. And then at that point, they felt like they had to arrest him because they had a lot of dirt on him. And they were scared that he was going to leave town and go to Connecticut. And because these people were itching to kill him, they already did the video shoot. They did the restaurant shooting. They did not want, you know what I'm saying, more innocent people getting killed when Takashi decided to go to Connecticut. So at that point, they arrested him and they showed him all the evidence that they had on him. Him. They had guns. They had video footage of him there when the shooting went down at the Barclays Center. They basically got him under the RICO stature, which we know is used for gangs and mafia members. And because, you know, they're always screaming out Treyway and he's a proud blood, they were able to tie him into all of this stuff. Plus, they found like AR 15s, AK 47s, and shit like that at his home. They also had a picture of him at one of the crime scenes wearing a backpack that said scum, which stood for scum gang, and then they found the same exact backpack in his home. So this situation is insane. There's a lawyer on Instagram right now that's dropping all types of tea. He snuck into their arrangement. He's basically breaking it down for everybody. And now the news is also speaking about this and all the evidence that's come out in the past 24 hours. I want you guys to go ahead and check out both of these stories and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Yeah. All right, just getting back into the office today. Crazy day of court. All right, I'm going to do a quick video about this. I was in court today, and I found myself in the same courtroom as rapper Takashi 69 Close with some of the guards in there, so they let me know, yo, 6 ix in the building. There's an arraignment going on. You might want to check. The lawyer came up there, and he said, yo, they're trying to deny bail, saying that 6 9 is a threat. But really, what happened in this case is that on Friday, the feds came to 6 9 and they said to him, 
that he should come into custody for protection because there's threats on his life. So Six Nine's ar- lawyer was making an argument that my client's not the threat. The feds admitted that the threat is actually on Six Nine's life, and so he should get bail. He's not. He's not a threat to the community. When the judge confronted the feds over that information, the feds explained why they believe there was a threat on Six Nine's life, and they said they had a wiretap up on some some of the people that Six Nine was working with, some of the other defendants in this case, and those people, the ones who Six Nine who Six Nine fired. Um, had indicated on that wiretap, you know, text messages and calls that they were going to go get 6 9 um, The feds actually quoted what was said, and they say, yo, we're going to violate this guy. We're going to, quote, super violate him. So hashtag super violate, man. That's, that was real crazy when I heard that. So the other crazy stuff we heard, we heard about how much people got in their bank accounts. Um, Shadi was in there, and Shadi was getting arraigned, and they discussed how much he had in his account, and they put it out there that he has 60000 in his account, 6 9s accounts. Uh, had 1.7 million. His lawyer offered to put every penny up and bail still got denied, which was crazy. I, I saw six nines head you right before the judge was, um, right before the judge was about to give his verdict. You know, the thing went on for about 40 minutes and the judge kind of sat there quietly and he was thinking about it, thinking about all the arguments he had just heard and the whole courtroom fell silent. And I saw six nine kind of dip his head down, kind of like he was in prayer. And then when the judge uh, started talking, he was listening very closely like he was in prayer and then when the judge uh, started talking he was listening very closely and, and then i just saw the look on his face when the judge denied bail man he was he was heartbroken interestingly you know when six nine walked in that courtroom uh, he was shivering he was shook he was really scared he looked like he had been shivering probably the whole time that he's been locked up and holding uh heart goes out to the kid man i hope i hope uh, he can get through this crazy day in court um Stay tuned. I'm going to try to get y'all some more updates on that case. You know, I'm actually going to be in the Eastern District of New York where El Chapo's trial is going on. So uh, I might even get an update on that. At Lawyer for Workers, we're not just talking about... Serving new details about rapper Takashi 69s alleged involvement in several crimes in New York City. Federal prosecutors released photos of Takashi, whose real name is Daniel Hernandez, mere feet away from someone in his group firing a gun inside Barclay Center. That happened on April 21st. That same day, Takashi was allegedly caught on camera watching his friend shoot at a car that had been following them. Prosecutors also released a photo of an AR-15 style rifle recovered at Takashi's apartment. All right, so you guys just saw that lawyer just spilling all types of tea. You guys heard the news report. Now, the craziest thing, a lot of folks are saying that Fat Joe spoke the truth when he interviewed Takashi and told him, you know what I'm saying, these people are watching you. You need to be careful. You need to watch your moves. But Takashi didn't take heed. And now Fat Joe is speaking out today. He did an interview with TMZ, basically talking about that prolific interview that he did with 6 9 10 months ago and how he doesn't revel in being right, but that basically he tried to warn him and that he's trying to warn all these young dudes in the game who are feeling like they need to keep it real and you know keep up this game banging persona at the end of the day it comes back to bite you in the ass y'all go ahead and shout out the interview that 6 9 did with Fat Joe a few months ago and then also what he told TMZ this morning check this out you see what happened to Bobby Schmurder right and Bobby Schmurder got Fat Joe'd these people these police they try to set me up so many times, my nigga. They didn't like who I was, who I stood for. I wasn't this much of a nice guy or conscious when I first was out here acting crazy. They wanted to get me like him, but they got him. Mm. One million percent, they are plotting on you, nah, my nigga. Know. You got a lot of energy around you. So the question is, do you want to be successful? Do you want to be the king? Do you want to be rich? Do you want to take care of your family? What do you want to do? Because I got to tell you, as an OG, as a nigga be around, I be lying to myself if I ain't tell you, yo, B, one move, they're going to try to throw you in there. Big time. Do you understand this? Nah, I know. I want to ask about this this big story that's been going on involving Takashi and this video interview you did with him. I'm not sure how long ago it was, but it's gone viral today. It's all over the internet, man. Well, it was uh, uh, maybe like nine, ten months ago, and it was on my podcast, Coca Vision on Title. Mm-hmm. And I was just trying to school him because I've been through that. And I had the heat on me. You know, I was wilding in the streets. So I tried to tell him as a young kid, it's my job because none of the OGs, when I came into the rap game, schooled me. They could have stopped me 
from a lot of trouble. So mm -hmm. I always, it ain't just Takashi. It could be young boy MBA or whoever. Whenever I catch one of these young boys, I try to school them and let them know. Mm -hmm. It just so happened that the Takashi thing was on film. And I was just telling them what was going to happen. You like, nailed yo, it. You, you nailed it, Joe. I was telling them, like, I'm, unfortunately, I was right. Mm -hmm. You know, I prayed for him. Uh, last night because I actually really like the kid. When you get to know him, he's actually a cool kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, he got a serious situation on his hands, man. And I try to warn him. You said they were going to try to fat Joe him over your exact oh, words, man. Oh, no, they're going to do it. They, I mean, they did it. Yeah. Have you stayed in contact with him? Has, has there been any contact with him you guys? I, I was in Dubai with him maybe two weeks ago. Okay. So he was out in Dubai. He had some shows. I had some shows. We had, actually had breakfast Every day we stood mm -hmm. in the same hotel, so we was talking and all that. And he had a feeling that something was, it was so, you know, I don't like to be, I told you so, or beat you on the head. But he was like, yo, I think I'm catching this case. I think, and he was telling me everything I mm -hmm. told him on the interview. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I mean, all the youth, it should be a neon sign. All the upcoming rappers and entertainers, you see what's going on. Be careful, take care of your family, B. Do you think his career is over, man? No. I don't believe his career is over. I don't believe Bobby Schmurter's career is over. Honey, when I tell you, you know, when elders speak, so many times people in this generation want to act like, you know what, y'all's old, y'all's just hating on the youth. It's not that. When older people tell you something, they're not saying it just to run their mouth nine times out of ten. They're telling you shit from experience. You know what I'm saying? Everything that Fat Joe was telling that boy, that boy should have took it and listened and ran with it. Because that was before the shooting at the Barclays Center. That was before he got involved in a lot of fuck shit. Now, Treyway and all these bloods, they've been involved in a lot of stuff. The police have been watching them. They've been under federal investigation since 2013. Six, nine did not hook up with these guys and start hanging out with them until 2017 from what his lawyer is saying. You know, so that says a lot. It's crazy how much this man was able to change in his persona and everything else and how these people just leached off of him. But this is what happens when you buy friends. This is what happens when you try and fake a persona. This dude is not about that life. He was never a real blood. You know what I'm saying? It sounds cool. Let me hang with a bunch of black people and, you know, claim blood and act like I'm so street and I'm so gangster. But at the end of the day, all this dude was was a come up for this gang and now he's being tied into all their fuck shit under the Rico stature and this is why people have to be very very mindful who they run with especially when they start blowing up and they become celebrities a lot of times new friends are not even worth the headache okay stick to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to if people can't accept you for who you are and the things that you stand for then fuck them you know what I mean don't go try and run out here and be some game banger blood and try and put on this persona when you're really not about that life you know this young man is looking at some serious serious charges he's looking at anywhere from 10 10 to life in prison. The lawyer tried to fight and put up $1.7 million for his bail and give up his passport. And guess what the court said? They said bail denied. So this is some serious shit. I know, you know, people like to joke. You got folks out here celebrating like Trippy Red thinking that this shit is funny. At the end of the day, I don't like to see any young person looking at that much time. But again, you cannot put yourself in certain situations and then think that other people are not watching, especially the police, especially the government, especially the feds, and think that you can make any type of moves because you're a personality on social media, because you're famous. All that shit has no merit when it comes to you committing crimes. If you want to sit there and commit crimes and put on this persona and keep acting the fool, the police will come knocking on your damn door. And I hope that this is a wake-up call for a lot of people, especially for these young rappers that are really coming up on social media and they're feeling the need to flex and show guns and show how about it they are. Well, 6 9 did the same thing, and right now he's looking at some serious damn time. So I hope a lot of these young boys take this as a lesson learned and they don't follow in his same footsteps because this entire situation could have definitely been prevented but unfortunately he got in way too deep over his head by the time he realized he was too deep into it he wanted to fall back like he was telling fat joe it was too damn late so anyways i want to go ahead and show you guys what azealia banks had to say about the situation because you know her ass always got something to say and then also what 50 cent his mentor is also saying about the situation y'all go ahead and check this out celebrating this kid's demise that y'all are fucking weird like i don't understand how people do that you know they just like be so happy when like a little like when a young minority fucks up they just be happy of 
voice of my asshole. You know, I'm from Harlem. That's just what I like to do. I just cut ass all fucking day. I just, it's just, just cut ass all fucking day, you know? But I wouldn't, like, I don't, I don't get excited when I see, like, some young rapper, some young rapper, like, being murdered or, like, going to jail or something. Like, y'all be like, ooh, that was good for him. He's like, y'all are crazy. Y'all are crazy, and y'all gotta stop that shit. Get that hate out of your heart. Y'all be calling me a hater, but I would never say no shit like that. All right, so you guys just saw what both of those people had to say. You know, and I wish that 50 Cent would have mentored him better. Now that he's in trouble, he's distancing himself from 6 9 And Azealia Banks, I could care less what she has to say about any situation, especially when them damn Snapchat bunny ears. So on top of 50 Cent, Azealia Banks, and Fat Joe speaking out about Takashi 6 9 Nicki Minaj also just spoke out today, and she's speaking on his album and sending him some love. I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what Nicki Minaj wrote today on Instagram. Check this out. So Nicki Minaj says for reasons beyond music the record company will hold off on putting his project out for now Danny I love you and I'm praying for you your mother daughter and her mom during this time all right so you guys just saw what Nicki Minaj had to say about the situation as well but like I said this entire situation is crazy again if you do the crime you got to be willing to do the time and he knew what he was getting involved with those folks used him for a come up and then when they thought that he was going to potentially snitch they plotted to kill him so it's really sad how some of the folks that you can kick it with break bread with, be cool with, can be the same motherfuckers plotting on you. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire disturbing situation, honey. Once again, concerning 6 9 charged with racketeering and firearms possession. Um, How do you guys feel about this situation? And then do you guys feel like he somewhat knew that this was coming because of things that he was saying on The Breakfast Club? So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you really enjoyed that video. If you want to know more about my look of the day or if you want a way to contact me concerning advertisement and sponsorship deals, definitely feel free to click my description box. There's plenty of information in there. Please stay tuned for the next video. Talk to y'all later.